gremlins! First of all, thank you all so much for 200 subscribers. My last YouTube short did really well and I was not expecting this much growth this quickly. Today, I'm turning more interesting looking mushrooms into characters. The first mushroom I've chosen to draw today is one of the more well-known species, one of the deadliest mushrooms in the world, the death cap. The death cap, Latin name Amanita phyllodis, looks unassuming. In fact, most deaths caused by this mushroom happen when people mistake it for similar appearing edible varieties. The toxins present in the death cap are not reduced with heat, so cooking this mushroom does nothing to make it less deadly. Half a mushroom is estimated to contain enough poison to kill an adult human, and is responsible for the majority of deaths by mushroom poisoning in humans. While most death cap poisonings are accidental, there is historical evidence that this mushroom has also been involved in the assassinations of several heads of state, including a Roman emperor. Eating a death cap requires hospitalization. Treatment includes liver transplants in severe cases, as among other things, the toxin causes liver failure. There is no antidote to death cap toxins, but there are some medications that may help, although I have no knowledge of chemistry or medicine, so I cannot understand or explain what works. According to Wikipedia, symptoms from death cap consumption usually appear 6 to 12 hours after ingestion and include nausea and vomiting, jaundice, seizures, liver failure, and, if left untreated, a coma which leads to death. The mortality rate of eating death cap is estimated to be between 10 and 30 percent. It has been observed that after around 24 hours, a person may feel fine again for a few days before signs of liver and kidney damage appear. The death cap is native to Europe, but has been introduced to every continent except Antarctica. It forms a symbiotic relationship with various deciduous trees, including the oak and chestnut. In some cases, its introduction to continents where it is invasive was because of the cultivation of trees it grows near. The fruiting body of the death cap appears in summer and autumn. The caps are usually light green in colour, but they can also appear white, yellow-green, bronze, and olive-green. The white variants are the most mistaken for other species. The cap ranges from 5 to 15 centimetres across, usually round but flattening with age. The death cap has white gills, spore print, and stems. The stem has a skirt called a ring or an annulus. Due to the death cap's deceptive, innocent appearance, I decided to draw this fairy character as a young, sweet-looking girl holding a bloody knife behind her back. She's dressed in a flowy skirted dress over a puffy sleeve collared shirt, an outfit that appears innocent and gentle. She also has buttoned boots and a death cap cap as a hat. The photo reference I used for this character has greenish brown caps. In my original plan for this image, I wanted her to be dressed all in white, but decided to use other colours in the design to make it more visually interesting. Her hair is tied into pigtails with ribbons, another design detail that indicates innocence, as well as youth. The start of this drawing was rather rocky, first struggling to pose the arms well, then accidentally using a too thick brush for the outlines and having to restart the line art. Once I restarted the line art and got to the colouring, however, the drawing went smoothly. Although usually a blouse under a dress would be white, the dress being the coloured element of the outfit, I wanted to keep my original plan of a flowing white dress on this unassuming killer. Therefore, I made the blouse a greenish-brown colour and the dress an off-white. This also ties to the appearance of the mushroom, a white skirted stem and a round cap that can appear brownish. I gave this character moth wings, since moth wings are often the same muted colours as this character's colour palette. I didn't give this image a detailed background. Unlike my other drawings, I usually give the mushroom fairies fairly simple foliage backgrounds. Since I draw three characters in these videos rather than one, making the backgrounds quick is a way I can maintain that many drawings in a week. A death cap wasn't even one of the mushrooms on my list of mushrooms to draw, because while it is a very interesting mushroom, it has very little visual interest. However, I'm really glad I chose to cover it. I like how this character came out. I think I translated the image I had in my head, of an unassuming, innocent-appearing girl who has killed and is prepared to kill again, her weapon hidden behind her as she flies forward with a smile. While the death cap has a lot of information about it I could learn, the next mushroom on my list is visually gorgeous and almost impossible to find information on. It doesn't even have a Wikipedia article, which is where I normally start my mushroom research. This is the mauve parachute, also known as a red pinwheel, scientific name Merasmius hematocephalus. The mauve parachute has a bright cap on a very thin stalk. The cap can be dark pink, rusty orange, or red. In this drawing, I chose to use a bright, dark pink mauve parachute as my reference image, since those are the most striking to me. The cap has divots where the widely spaced gills on the underside of the cap grow. This makes the top of the cap appear pleated or folded. 
The mauve parachute grows 5 centimeters tall with a cap diameter of 1.2 centimeters, making it very tiny and delicate. It is found in North America, Africa, Central and South America, Southern Asia, and Australia. It feeds off decomposing forest material and grows on the forest floor of deciduous forests. That is all the information about mauve parachutes I could find. If you know more about these mushrooms, I'd love to hear about it. I really like them for their unique and adorable look, but I couldn't tell you any more facts about them. Based on the appearance of these mushrooms, I made this character very small and slight. I also decided that she is autistic, not because of anything to do with the mushroom, just because I wanted to. She is stimming subtly, playing with a pendant necklace around her neck, and not meeting the eye of the viewer. I gave this character long braids to mirror the appearance of the long, thin stems on the mushroom. She has a skater skirt that mimics the folded pattern of the mauve parachute caps. Her hat is also a mushroom cap with those same folds. She also has Mary Jane shoes with ruffled socks. The rest of her outfit is simple and plain, a long sleeve and leggings under her skirt. This mushroom is extremely bright. When colour sampling the image to colour my fairy character, I realise that this pink is at full saturation, which colours from nature rarely are. Therefore, this fairy's hat and skirt are vibrant dark pink, against a more muted pink long sleeves and leggings. Her hair and shoes are the same brown as the stems of these mushrooms. This fairy has segmented and translucent wings, similar to cicada wings. Despite how many times I've drawn wings like these, I still need to look up reference images to draw the segment pattern. Once again, I drew a very simple green background and a tree branch for this fairy to stand on. This drawing was fairly quick to create and fairly easy as well. While this character doesn't have as clear a characterization as the Deathcap fairy, I think she has a lot of personality and I like her design, although it is fairly simple compared to many of the fairies I've drawn. The final fairy I'm drawing today is also the most detailed in design. This fairy is based on the indigo milk cap mushroom. The indigo milk cap mushroom is also known as indigo lactarius, blue milk mushroom, indigo milky, and its scientific name, lactarius indigo. It is a large blue mushroom with a cap ranging in diameter from 5 to 15 centimeters and growing between 2 and 10 centimeters tall. When young, the mushroom's fruiting body is dark blue, fading to blue-gray or silvery when older. Its gills are also dark blue and crowded close together. When first sprouted, the body of this mushroom is convex or rounded. Over time, the edges lift up and the middle becomes depressed, so that the cap is more funnel-shaped. Sometimes, caps develop rings of pale and dark blue. The indigo milk cap is named for the milky liquid it secretes when cut or broken. All mushrooms in the Lactarius family have this liquid, known either as milk or as latex. The indigo milk cap is interesting because this liquid is also blue, although when exposed to air it turns green over time. The indigo milk cap is edible, however as I always warn during these videos, please do your own research and be very careful before eating any mushrooms you find yourself, no matter how unique an appearance it might have. The fact that this mushroom is edible makes it one of the few naturally blue foods, although when cooked the blue of the mushroom turns grey. The indigo milk cap is found in eastern North America, East Asia, Central America, and France. It grows in both deciduous and coniferous forests. I decided to give this character a full skirted gown with a pattern of blue rings, and a boned dark blue corset. The bones of that corset mirror the gills of the mushroom. Her hands are clasped in front of her with trailing sleeves. She has a necklace and earrings dripping with dark blue jewels, in reference to the blue liquid of the indigo milk cap. Her shoulders are bare, her neckline wide. On her head she has the cap of an indigo milk cap, a ringed blue cap with dark gills. With a wide-necked blue dress and a single braid over her shoulder, this character worryingly started to look a lot like Elsa from Disney's Frozen as I worked. I quickly coloured her hair black, which I hope made the resemblance less obvious, as it was never intended in the first place. Luckily this, plus her darker complexion, made her look like her own unique character. Her dress has a pattern of rings up the skirt and around the sleeve. There are both lighter and darker blue stripes, the stripes getting thinner the closer to the bodice they are. The skirt was looking too perfect, unwrinkled and perfectly bell-shaped, which doesn't look quite right for fabric. However, creating pleats or wide folds would make the pattern more difficult to draw and look less like rings. I solved this problem in the shading stage, creating soft shadows along the hem as though the fabric is slightly folded but not folded enough to appear in the outlines I drew. I then spent fully 10 minutes trying to fix the pale edges that appeared where the shadow on the skirt should have been. This is a problem that often appears when my shadow layer is offset from the layers below by one or two pixels, however shifting the shadow layer around did not fix the issue, just moving where those pale pixels appeared. It turns out that when I selected the skirt to shade only within that area, the selection was slightly too small, leaving unshaded edges. Once I identified the problem, it was easy to fix, it was just annoying to find the problem. And with that, this fairy is complete, with a simple background of grass and the blurry possibility of foliage. I really like the design of her dress especially, I think the simple pattern worked well. 
And here are all three fairies I drew today. Let me know which design is your favorite in the comments. If you really like mushrooms, check out my Etsy store in the description to see some hand-painted mushroom t-shirts, among other designs. If you know of more mushrooms that would be interesting to turn into fairy characters, let me know that as well. Until next time, bye! Marasmus hematocephalus. Marasmus hematocephalus. Marasmus hematocephalus. I can say that. <laughs>